parish physical home. <clears throat> Rob and Allison take care of our spiritual home. I think very well. And Toby and uh, Steve, thank you for that. Uh, your endowment board, as you probably know, consists of five members elected for three year term. And we're charged with overseeing the funds with very distinct purposes. Uncle Road, which was established, as you know, in 1979, has become probably one of our most important funds, providing scholarships for post secondary education for worthwhile students in the Blue Ridge School District. Scholarships are awarded and administered by the Rose Scholarship Committee, which you will hear from later uh, during the meeting. Uh, <clears throat> in 2021, we had 11 recipients. And as of May the 31st of this year, our balance is $554,868. Yes. Thanks to the generosity of our parish family, 2022 promises to be even a greater year for Concord Road. With the bequests and gifts approaching $600,000 to date, we should bring our principal balance well above a million dollars by the end of this month. Thank you, Pat, for your inspiration. So I really yeah, think we owe her. The community owes you with that. Um, the Shepherd Endowment, established in 1999, is a fund restricted to meet human needs and in cashiers in the surrounding area, while also focusing on post-secondary education. The balance as of um, May 31st, and this fund was $504,020. Second Century Fund, established in 1995 on the 100th anniversary of our current church building, was created to celebrate our past and while preparing for our future. These are restricted funds, and uh, anything under $5,000 in maintenance is paid out of the operating funds. Anything over that, we can uh, entertain paying um, from this fund. The balance as of May the 31st is $920,918. The Heinz Hall Endowment, established in 2013, of course, is an essential part of the parish life of Good Shepherd. It includes what we're doing now, coffee hours, ELL, and numerous other things. The balance as of May 31st, again, is $185,200. Uh, the vestry and the endowment board do have spending rules, and in general, no more than 5% of any fund are distributed in any one calendar year. Um, with the current state of the markets, I'm happy to report that Irv is doing, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate Irv Rowling and what he's done for us to keep us um, on, the, on the straight path. As you know, the parish was founded in 1878, and to honor that, the 1878 Society was created to honor those who have invested in the future of the Church of Good Shepherd. Our community, by gift or bequest to any endowment, uh, has created this 1878 Society. Remembering Good Shepherd in this way is a commitment to further the mission of this blessed church in the mountains. And if anybody is interested, and being a member of this august group, the 1878 Society. Uh, we can arrange that if you want to give something in a, in a gift, uh, a bequest, or a check would be nice. Uh, so just see Father Rob or any member of the best group. And in closing, I want to thank the committee, uh, our Rob Wood, our course of Laura and Herb, our ex officio members, and Helen. Christy Banks' is, um, account has been a huge help to us.
love about the Conquer Row endowment is that it's a, a very active endowment. Some, like the second century, is passive most years. We don't have to do something every year. But, um, and, and Dave is going to give us a report from the scholarship side of things um, and shortly to tell you a little more about the, the students and the schools and the numbers. But we're, we're giving away healthy amounts um, and good amounts. Um, just going down a little bit on the agenda sheet that you have on page one. Um, this is the time of year we begin to actually look ahead to 2023, uh, knowing that a lot of people are here. So we'll be looking in the mail uh, in the next week or so for the stewardship card, a time and talent card, a treasure card that will come with that. As you remember, there, there are two cards for time and talent and whatever it takes for the individual members of the household to, to do that, to let us know the things you want to be involved in and how you want to give in those ways. Regarding our generosity, as you know, it is one of the big parts of what we're trying to do. And then also the, the financial card and the, and the stewardship card uh, is an important part of that. Please return those uh, in the summer uh, and that way you won't... We'll, you won't have to get that call in November. About we're, we're hoping to hoping to hear from you. I look around the room. No one here is a culprit in that. So I, I do. I thank you for your your generosity that has been ongoing in, in so many ways. And I do want to echo Vic's point that when you are making those estate plans, and if you haven't done that recently, just in general principle, please do have an updated plan. But do please remember Good Shepherd in those plans and specify where you'd like it to go. Sometimes we'll receive a gift and there's no specification, and that's a sort of a hint to us, just use it where it's best to be used. But if you want it to go to Conquer Row, if you want it to go to the Shepherd Fund, if you want it to go to Heinz Saul, the designation of that is, is most helpful to us in that. Um, so it, it, as he said, it could be a, a gift that you make now to be part of the Society of 1878. It could be a, a, a gift that you're making in the, will make in the future uh, upon your estate. And that also has you as part of the Society of 1878. So thank you for that. One of the casualties, at least short-term casualties of the pandemic was the auction, uh, gathering in this room and, and shouting with another 200 people with it about being about this warm as it is now. I don't know what it is about the summer and the air conditioners deciding to go. Um, but we had decided to put it off that when we met this year as a vestry, not to have it again this summer, because part of that is, because of health and they weren't sure where I was going. But part of it is the barn, which you're going to hear about, and the shed are doing so well that we're, we're able to meet the needs of outreach, which you'll hear about too. So when we bring the auction back in 2023, we want to do it and we want it to have a purpose. It may still be outreach. It may be tied to the barn because we have an initiative to try to find our own land, build our own building, and have that as a, as a better legacy for the future in terms of using the funds, sort of paying them back to us rather than paying them to the bank in large amounts. So those kind of things would be a fundraiser, maybe even a capital campaign to do that because we're guessing that barn initiative is probably 1.5, 1.6 million dollars, all things said, depending on what, what pricing is. And so we wanna be good stewards of that. Um, the place where we have now is good and adequate and we're glad that you're going. But uh, we certainly want it to, to be able to up our, our game a little bit, particularly with storage, because we've had so many great uh, donations of late, and you'll, you'll hear about that. Um, in terms of the, the rest of it, sort of the state of the church, I am really, really pleased about how, as I said, we've managed through the pandemic. And part of that, of course, is uh, you all coming to church, praying for each other, visiting each other, caring for each other. Um, reaching out in all those different ways to the leadership of the church. It really has been, as it should be, you know, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors and see all the people and the people. And you're not just in the church building. You're all out in the community doing so many different things. And that's one of the reasons we have a vital congregation is because of you all and what you do. And certainly the staff. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to have Allison with us. And I'm very thankful that you've joined. It's appropriate to applaud if you want to And always having Ellen, having Ellen back from her sojourn. We're all breathing a sigh of relief to have him back at full speed and, and all that's good. Uh, but Lynn with music and Christy with finances and, and so much that's going on is just wonderful. 
leadership um, from the vestry. Uh, Peter Keck, where are you? You're doing a great job as junior warden. So many projects have just been going this spring. Appreciate that. Even the things that you find that we didn't want to know about uh, <laughs> that we need to, to fix. So all that is good. So thank you for that. And Laura Langford, you just steady as a rock and so many different ways. You... Sometimes people are so involved in the church. I say, you know, if they're involved in ministry, they may not still do all those other things. Well, Laura is able to do both. <laughs> she is really from, from ELL to the barn to senior warden. Thank you for all of your faith and wisdom that you that you bring to us. I really appreciate it very much. Um, our mission and vision continues. You've heard me preach about that recently, reflecting God's love for our faith and action. But certainly through those points uh, that you see on the front of your bulletin, growing the generosity, uh, welcoming people and belonging, all those parts, we're trying to weave it into the fabric of everything we do, not just have a committee doing this or a committee doing that, but to be mindful of it in all those ways. So please, Continue to be that, and thank you, Ruth and Carrie, for putting that graphic together and, and having that for us um, in our agenda today. One of the other good things about 2022 is that ELL is back in full swing, plus some. Uh, we have not had classes in the summer before, but the students wanted them, and we as the parish have rose, risen to the occasion. And not just one night a week, but two nights a week, including tonight. So we're going to make sure this meeting ends so we can clear out and let them come in and, and do their learning that they're going to be doing tonight. But so many people have been involved in that. And, and I appreciate uh, particularly like having in the summer because people who haven't been involved at other times of year can be involved now and, and join into that. So that's really a wonderful thing. Uh, another positive thing uh, so far this year was the youth confirmation just a couple weeks ago. We haven't had a youth confirmation class since I've been here, so now we had one, and that was really, really good. So again, thanks to Allison for helping to teach and corral and love and nurture those kids. Um, with all that, it was, a, it was a wonderful piece. Uh, and throughout the pandemic, we've had a great influx of new members and visitors your hospitality is what keeps things going. You're inviting people. Uh, it's usually not what's going to be on an email. It's not going to be what's on a bulletin board. It's going to be you saying, where do you go to church? If you have a church home, why don't you come to Good Shepherd? Come with me. We'll be, I'll meet you at 9.15. We can go in together. Those kind of things, inviting people. And now there are more doors, quote unquote, to church than a Sunday morning. Come work at the barn. Come help. Come play Mahjong. Come help with ELL. Sometimes it smoothly and slowly eases people into the life of the community before walking in on a Sunday morning. In particular, if they're not Episcopalians in the liturgy, and maybe it's too formal for some, um, but they feel the warmth, and then it all works out in the end. So thank you for, for that and all that you are, are doing. So uh, that is the, the, the few words that I wanted to share along with that. At this point, I want to turn things over uh, to Janie Cruz and to, to Bill. Is Bill here? I saw Bill here. Bill Canby to come up and share with you some about the outreach grants that are also in both of these booklets. Janie, Bill. Bill and I are co chairs of the outreach, <laughs> excuse me, grant committee this year. And so um, Rob usually says, Jane, you're on the agenda, but only five minutes. So I told Bill he has to do this part. So I'm going to talk to you for hopefully just two and a half minutes. And then Bill's going to do the same. You believe that? <laughs> anyway, um, in, on page 12 of the colorful booklet is the list of agencies that outreach grant funded in 2021. Just yesterday, we finished our process for 2022, and that's on the first two pages of, of the white book, the handout. I'm not going to read all those to you, so don't worry. <laughs> those are for you to take on, but I did want to point out just uh, two or three of the really interesting, wonderful agencies that we have and, and which we have funded that you might not know about. Uh, one of them is Heights, H-I-G-H-T-S. Um, they serve students 
they, they get the students from all the schools, they get references from the schools. These are students that have been suspended or expelled or either have to learn at home because their behavior is not such that they can attend school. All of these students are in poverty. They all have had some sort of trauma in their lives and they go to our local schools. Um, this agency is active in the seven western counties in North Carolina. But in Jackson County, they served 113 of these students this past year. They have something called um, inside out, meaning they're out of school and they're going outside, but we're going to do things to help them turn inside out. They have OJT opportunities for jobs. They now have a sawmill and the students build tiny houses. They do beekeeping. They have a community garden that the students work and many more activities. And these, of course, as you can imagine, give them something to focus on. And when hopefully they graduate from high school, if they don't go to college, they have some sort of trade. So it's something they can enjoy doing and they can see the profit in it and that it's good for the community. All of these things are good for the community. Um, <coughs> they also collaborate with a lot of agencies in Western North Carolina. They are partnering with the Methodist Church. I don't know which Methodist Church, uh, but to offer a summer program to these kids this year. They're also in collaboration with Western North Carolina and their interns. They have 22 interns that help them work this program locally. So that's a wonderful, exciting organization doing a lot of good that needs to be done. Um, United Christian Ministries has been around for a long time and their headquarters is in Silva and they help people that are down and out with all kinds of things. Uh, they might pay electrical bills for them one month or do other things. They have a van and they deliver food to people where they are in case they can't get to them. They deliver 21,000 bags of food this year. And they, uh, when we heard the presentation, they made a point of saying that some of these were Blue Ridge kids. They also help the homeless along with um, another agency called HERE, H-E-R-E. HERE is in Jackson County. The only homeless shelter close by used to be, oh, they still are, in Brevard called La Haven. And we supported them for many years. But now there's going to be um, a homeless center built in Jackson County. Um, and we have to, I have to, and, and I think I have finally after years, uh, do away with our preconceived notions that the homeless are old, dirty, boarded men under bridges and tents. Because that may be true to some degree, they are also single parents with kids in our schools. They are families, entire families with kids in our school. And some of them are, some of these families, according to, I'm getting this information from United Christian Ministries, they are at Blue Ridge. So uh, they're all around, they're in all the communities. So they're doing very good work with that. Um, on a brighter note, if you haven't been over to see the New Boys and Girls Club, it's fantastic. And they would love to give you a tour. It's a real state-of-the-art facility. And they also teach values. It's not just babysitting. It's actually doing developmental things with the kids. Um, they offer a summer program where you can send your kids while the parents work and the kids are at school for $400, five days a week, all summer. But the best news of all is that's if you can afford $400 for your child. If you can't, they will give you a lesser cost, lesser amount. And if you can't do that, they will let your child go for free. No one is turned away. So y'all spread the word to anybody you may know. Anybody, anybody's child can go there. So it's just wonderful. And I hope you all have a chance to see that. Okay, Bill's going to tell you about a new initiative that's being developed from outreach group. Janie took five minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> I don't have any time at all. But she's right. We have a new endeavor 
uh, that's a, basically a subcommittee of the outreach committee. And a little backstory is, is probably appropriate at this point. Several years ago, um, Cashers Valley Preschool, one of our um, agencies that we support, fell upon hard times. They lost their executive director. Uh, the board was somewhat dispirited. Uh, attendance was low. And we had been supporting them for years, years and years. Irv Welling and I, uh, and Irv's contacts at Wade Hampton, Cedar Creek, we got together and we put a coalition uh, together that basically pulled CDP back into uh, operations and is doing very well today. Uh, as a result of the financial aid we gave them, I ended up along with Janice Cox of being put on the board. Thank you, Irv. <laughs> uh, but that turned out to be a blessing in the sense that uh, we were able to assist them on an ongoing basis not just with their financial uh, aspects, but board governance, the structure of the board, um, helping them uh, find a way to attract more students and uh, basically it's been a success story. That's the backstory. The future is that uh, I got to thinking about whether or not we could do this with a lot of our other agencies on the plateau. And Linda Quick and I got together and Linda will do this. She's got great ideas. And so she said, let's put together a subcommittee and let's interest those um, others in the community who can collaborate on a like-minded basis. These organizations would assist nonprofit agencies in critical areas in addition to financial uh, support. Those areas are uh, included but aren't limited to board structure and governance. Uh, word recruitment, which is important, long-range planning, marketing, and communications. Uh, in order to get this going, we put together um, uh, our vision and mission. The mission would be to uh, build capacity within these agencies to serve more people who are in need. Uh, Perhaps they can serve double the amount with the same dollars that they're spending. They can just spend them in better ways. So we're, we are in need of that talent that's part of your card, this time, talent, and treasure, to identify people with various skill sets. It might be legal. It might be communications, marketing. Uh, it could be financial planning, banking, anything that uh, can impact these nonprofits in a way that just going through the grant process doesn't automatically do. So as part of our application this year, we put a question in there that alluded to that, that asked the agencies to respond yes or no, that they would uh, appreciate additional information that could help them in their uh, non-financial endeavors, if you will. So with about 30 plus agencies that we support, we heard from almost half that they would like that. And it could be different things. It might be help us with board recruiting or help us with a communication plan to get, our, to get the word out. So we think that that's a pretty good mandate for proceeding ahead with, with our effort. And with that, we need support. We, we have a small committee today, Linda Quick, me, uh, Miles Russ, who's back there, and Chris Hayes, who I don't see uh, here at, at tonight. Uh, but we need more people who can identify with this uh, outreach ministry and support that uh, with their specific skill sets. And I would say, get, get with me or Linda, and we can talk more about that. Uh, this is a project by project endeavor. So you, you might come in and then go out. You might do something to help them legally and then come out. It's not a lifelong job that we're talking about. <laughs> it's just being part of a, another effort to, to help our agencies. As I listen to y'all, I realize there are two former senior wardens who are teaming up to make outreach happen. 
and your leadership is appreciated. Janie, what has it been, nine years you've been chair of outreach? And so she is rotating off this year. So please, let's give Janie a round of applause. We really have led a great endeavor. And as you look on the, the page that she was referring to, page three of your agenda handout, uh, the bottom number at the top of the page of $303,000 is an amazing number. And that comes from the barn, which is an amazing ministry and those who donate and those who work and this, just how all this works together. And again, that's part of what makes this a, a vital place um, and a vital church, helping out so many people and, and doing these things. By the way, we don't publish this kind of list in the paper. This is sort of an internal list for us to know and share, even the one that's at the barn. It'll list all the agencies. It might say the total number, but it doesn't go specifically agency by agency. This isn't secret information, but it's also not something that we're broadcasting out to, but we do want to let you all know uh, that as we're going through. Any questions on, on outreach? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, speaking of that, we're moving on to the Conqueror Scholars. We've heard about the fund and the giving, but now let's hear about the scholars and the amounts themselves. And, and Dave has been the chair of the group this year. Dave Kirshner, please come forward. Thank you. It's been a year of transition for the Conqueror Scholarship Committee. Um, we had four returning members, Pat, of course, Sharon Stricker, Ann Hoyerman, and myself. We had five new members, so it's a complete changeover of the committee. Eleanor Welling, MC Push, Kevin Rowland, Judy Gray, and Susie Sinclair joined us this year. The other transition is instead of just Blue Ridge School, we also have Summit High School now, which graduated its first class this year. Um, so as a result, we had 11 new scholars added to our group starting the uh, 2020. 2022-2023 school year. One person was a homeschool scholar, four came from Blue Ridge, and six came from Summit High, Summit High School, the first graduating class. Um, they will receive, spread differently, of course, 21,000 towards their tuition in the first year, and that's total for the 11. And starting with year two, there are a couple that are on a delay, but they'll go up to 25,000 a year as they continue on for school. We have 16 continuing scholars who are currently in school, enrolled, uh, and one grad student. And I have to take just a moment to speak to the character. This is emotional, sorry. We had... Uh, a young lady last year that we granted a four-year postgraduate scholarship to dental school at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, this young lady uh, had been a previous Conco Road scholarship winner. Um, she sent us a text this week and said she'd received a full scholarship for the next three years. Excuse me. She then asked us to pass along what she was using to another scholar. So we had just received a request from somebody who just graduated this spring to, about going to grad school. So we were able to switch the money over to her. So. Sorry about that. So we will have a total of 28 scholars in the program this coming school year, um, and a total of $66,000 will be paid in their, both their tuition, and there are some other smaller items, such as some computers or some help with some books, uh, that we have a little fund set aside for that. Um, the schools that they are going to, I'm just going to read a list here because it's a, a wide variety of schools. Uh, Furman University, Western Carolina University, Agnes Scott College, UNC Wilmington, Eastern Carolina University, Appalachian State University, Warren Wilson College, Clemson University, Southern Wesleyan University, UNC Greensboro, UNC Charlotte, 
uh, UNC, oh, I already got the point one, excuse me, Brunswick Community College, Cape Fear Community College, and Toccoa Falls College down in Georgia. Uh, wide variety of students, wide variety of schools that are in fact. Uh, your continuing support is very much appreciated and we are very grateful for the gifts that you all have given us. Thank you. Thank you, Dave, very much. And I just want to say to everybody on the outreach committee and everybody on the Conco Row Scholarship Group works very hard. They're interviewing students. They're tracking them through. They're staying up with them on the outreach side, going to visit places all the way over to Swananoa, Bill, to the, to the prison to see about that, that prison ministry, down to Silva around here. So a lot of energy goes into making this a relational part and not just here's the check. We want to know the people. We want to know what's going on. We want to help them through their lives. And that's a way of reflecting God's love is making it relational. And I really appreciate the work everybody on the scholarship committee and, and the Conical Road do. If y'all would just stand up if you're on either one of those groups, the outreach group or the Conical Road group, and we can give you our thanks. Now I get to talk about something fun, uh, and that is the sabbatical. It's on page, this is on page uh, four and five. I'm not going to read through all of this. Uh, I just want to say, on, on behalf of me and Linda, for sure, we're very appreciative of this time. Uh, it is, yes, baked into the letter of agreement that all clergy have with the parish, knowing that it's time for, for rest and renewal. Uh, and and it's, as it says on some of the top of page four, this is not an extended vacation. Although there are elements of vacation and rest that come with it, a lot of it has to do with learning and having some experiences, even just longer opportunities to read and rest and to do some of that interior work that clergy people like all of us need to do, but that sometimes gets away from us in the middle of what's happening week to week. So I'm very thankful uh, that that's part of my agreement and very thankful and true that it's been a well-funded thing. A lot of savings that has gone on through the years and we're able, Linda and I, to do some things together. Some of it I'll be doing on my own. And you can see on page five um, at the top over there, or sort of in the middle, a rough outline of my time away from August 17th uh, till November 10th, the Thursday when I come back in the office uh, into church before starting again on that Sunday. So the first couple of weeks could be visiting with family, doing some preparation for a, a wonderful trip to Italy, reading, unwinding, those kind of things. And then from the 5th to the 5th, September to October, getting to go to places like Assisi and learn more about St. Francis and St. Clair, and not just sort of dashing there and then dashing out, really soaking it in, uh, which was recommended, and I think it's wise. We'll spend some days hiking through Tuscany, 10 miles a day, uh, visiting some places. Siena is a holy site for St. Catherine, and then Florence has many uh, religious sites and other things to see and do. Then on to Rome to visit the, the Vatican, the Pieta, uh, St. Peter's Sistine Chapel, catacombs. A, a lot of this has to do with the pilgrimage that was planned. You know, we went to the Holy Land one year, we went then to Greece, and sort of as Christianity spread to the West, this was meant to be the next step. Uh, and having not been to a lot of these places, this gets to be a little bit of reconnaissance for hopefully what will be a pilgrimage sometime in 23 in the late summer, early fall, that we as a parish could go and, and do some of these same things and experience them. So I'm, I'm hoping that that um, is, uh, is possible. And then some time on the Amalfi Coast. There are probably not a lot of religious sites <laughs> on the Amalfi Coast, but, but it will be a holy time. I promise you that. I don't think we'll get to see the Pope. We won't be there on that Wednesday, um, but uh, you never know, I, but I doubt. Um, and then one back stateside for October 6th to November 9th, again, that sort of month, a little more than a month. There are a lot of things that have been on my heart, given what's going on in the country and in life about social justice, about understanding the lives of our neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who are my neighbors? As someone who's grown up in the South, I went to a school that was 50-50 black and white. And as a kid, I didn't have a lot of understanding of some of what families lived through 
um, if their skin was black or brown. And over the past couple of years, again, with pandemic and George Floyd and other things, it just seemed to be again and again, it's, it's finally sort of hitting me in my heart is there is some work to be done there. Personally, there's some work to be done as a church and to experience some of these places and go there. So uh, places in, in Montgomery, Alabama are listed here, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, uh, places in Atlanta, the Absalom Jones Center, a place to study, to meet, to have some conversation, to share some perspective. Uh, it's just helpful for learning and listening and being as an extension, again, of loving your neighbor. And the same with our indigenous brothers and sisters. We're on Creek and Cherokee land now. Uh, I grew up in that same type of place. There are places in Alabama and Tennessee from Trail of Tears to, to other places to understand their civilization, where they are, and how we're coming to terms with some of the things that even we as a church did that were not so church-ish um, in our relationship with them. And so that sort of a personal study is a personal lament. It's a personal aim. So what might be the next steps towards not doing it again, doing what we can to make things different as the people of God? And so those kind of things I'll be doing um, stateside. So if you see something that's not on here that you think would be good, I'm open to that. Um, I'm quickly telling Linda, I don't have enough time to get done everything that it'll be fun to do or important to do. And obviously some of these things are not gonna be fun to go to what amounts to a lynching museum in South Alabama to see what people do to people. And it only takes turning on the television to see what some of those things are now. And again, those are some of the things we'd like to be able to reverse from what has happened in the past. Um, so we ask uh, for your prayers. We'll be praying for you. This is not only a time of renewal for me and for Linda, but it's a time of renewal for the church. To, to time to sit back and relax and think, not sit back necessarily, but stand back, take some perspective. Allison is, is a wonderful person to be here, not just for this, but in general, but as, as someone who can help lead through this. Laura and Peter, we've been meeting along with Karen and Patch, last year's wardens, about what that looks like for the parish. And as it says in here, we ask you all to, to lean in, not lean out. Not to say, okay, he's going to be gone. He's not going to miss me. He'll never know. <laughs> kind of thing. So it's been come. Stay here as part of the active, vital ministry that we have. The vestry needs you. God needs you. You need each other. And in those ways that you keep on going, I invite you to, to, please, to please do that. Again, I'm not going to read it all, uh, but I would be happy to entertain any questions that you have at this point. <clears throat> There's an amazing civil rights museum in Birmingham, in the church where the three little girls were bombed. That'd be an interesting place. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good idea. Any other questions or thoughts with that? All right, there'll be more to say in the weeks ahead, but we just wanted to let you know sort of more as we got closer what that was, was all about. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Allison, who's going to talk a little bit about Vacation Bible School, another good new initiative or a renewed initiative for us. So uh, it does say renew as part of, we're going to start before Robbie even leaves. That's, that's what we're going to do. Um, so Vacation Bible School is, is called Renew, and uh, it's based on the parable of the sower. And I wonder if, if any of you remember the story. Of course you do. A sower went out to sow. And some of his seed landed on rocky ground and was eaten by the birds. And some of his seed landed on the path. And some of the seed was choked out by Yes, and so and some of the seed landed on good Yes, yeah, right, on good ground. So that's, that's the parable of every day that week of July 25th to 29th, we're going to tell that story. And we're going to tell that story in words. We're going to tell that story by growing things. We're going to tell that story by playing games. We're going to tell that story by singing songs and just being together. I know that many of you don't have children that are at that age range between preschool and fifth grade. <laughs> but you might know someone who does. You might have grandchildren or uh, aunt, nieces and nephews or someone in your neighborhood who might benefit 
from coming to join us, and I hope you will. There's a bulletin board in the back hallway that has registration forms. I also have some over here on that table. Um, we've printed those in Spanish and English, and we've done a, and will continue to do a good outreach to our community. And, and I hope that we draw a lot of the children that we've gotten to know in ELL. I hope they come for that week. Um, I would like to say that this would not have been possible at all without the advisory committee who then morphed into the doing committee. <laughs> they probably will never uh, ever say yes to me again when I say, we got an advisory committee? Because that really means will you be willing to do it? Um, and then Judy Gray, can you stand? And Judy and Laura Langford, and let's see, Catherine Dean, and uh, Lynn Jones snuck out, and who else like me? Debbie Lassiter, uh, Lynn Burkett, Maisie Belzer. Um, I'm sure I left someone out so someone can call me later. I didn't mean to, but without them, uh, this would not have happened. It's been a tremendous. And Kay Coulson. So it's been a, it's been a really uh, great time. And if you'd like to volunteer, um, we are serving breakfast giving a snack and serving lunch on those five days. So uh, if you'd like to help with any of that, see me or see one of those wonderful women and we'll make sure that we find a way. So you may not feel comfortable sitting on the floor anymore or leading a craft activity or singing songs, but I'm pretty sure you can find a way to help us with Vacation Bible Surprise because we are Thrilled. The sign is going to go up this week. You'll see it out in front of the church. There'll be a sign later on at the crossroads. So um, we are we are trying to uh, let people know that Church of the Good Shepherd is here in a different way. It's here for lots of people, and hopefully this is a way we can also be here for our community. There's a supply list. Thank you. And um, we are collecting those things. And Nancy Duncan came today, and she brought some. And um, these can be repurposed. They don't have to be brand new. You don't have to run to Walmart. You can say, oh, look, I've got these 16 colored pencils, or I've got this set of tempera paints I'm never going to use, or I've got these things from the last time my grandkids were here, and they're never going to do that thing again. Bring them to us. We'll make good use of them. Okay. And if you have a talent, like, again, I'm going to go back to that. Gardening, beekeeping. I don't know if you keep goats. I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> secretly, secretly, some of you are goat herders. I know that. And then we can, we can figure out how to hook you in um, to our program for that week. I'm, I'm excited about it, excited to be working with these folks. And, um, and, and if any case, you can just stop by and, and see how it's going for us. That would be fun too. I'd love to share that. Thanks, Will. Another example of your energy, and I appreciate all that you do in bringing all that. Uh, Peter Keck has a, a lot of things going on, buildings and grounds. He wants to uh, share some of that with you. There's also always a list on the bulletin board. If you see something that's in, in need of repair, it, it, we've got a long list, but we're trying to prioritize that and, and make that happen. He's going to share what he's been working on. Thank you. Yeah, this is my first annual meeting as your junior warden. and. Uh, I wanted, to, I wanted to tell you that the planning process that kind of went through my mind was to look at all the assets that we have and to make sure that we were crafting a plan that could keep them and preserve them for future. So what we did, uh, I had a, a handwritten note from Rob and from some other folks, and then we established a short-term list and then a, a future list that we wanted to be able to accomplish. So <clears throat> in the first, first term, we knew that we needed to repair the roof. And I can say that we have accomplished that, uh, although we haven't had a major rainstorm since we did it, but let's hope it's happened. We uh, knew that our bell tower needed uh, wood preservatives, and we have completed that. Um, the back deck has been stained again for the first time since in the last four years. So we also had some sidewalk repair that needs to be done. Uh, that's going to begin on uh, July the 11th, 
So be prepared for three or four pallets of stone out front and a concrete mixer. So the month of July is going to be a little bit uh, difficult to access the church. You may have to go through one sidewalk or the other. We decided that we needed to have a handicap ramp on this one end of going into the church, so of the sidewalk. So we're going to take out those steps here, and we're going to put in a gradual ramp for that one. We're going to keep the other steps as they are on the other side. We're going to, for the future, for the future, what we're going to do is we're going to put in an EV station down at the uh, back of the church. We're going to locate that um, after we go and look through the uh, wiring possibilities of going underneath the church from our main uh, control. We have um, the meditation garden, stonework, and the new future um, sidewalk is going to have to be sealed. We've got that on our plans for that. We are going to have a discussion with the Owen Paving Company who did our who did our uh, back uh, Keep talking. who uh, did our repaving. So we know that we have an overflow problem down there going seeping into the basement. So we think that probably the best way to do that is to kind of to be to create another drain uh, in front of the curb and then tie it into the exit portal going out uh, to the creek. We think that uh, that's going to solve that problem. And uh, what we have done is create a, another uh, little door stop down at the bottom to help put a little band aid on that problem. We have a new firearm, fire alarm, and smoke detector system that's in the process. We um, had a difficult time in getting our current existing supplier to uh, come through with a circuit board that we needed. So we made a change. And, we have a new system that's going to be installed uh, within the next, uh, shortest beginning in, in two to three weeks. So that's going to happen. Uh, we have some interior painting and ceiling repair that needs to be done in the two classrooms back there. That's on our list. Um, we know that in years two and three, there's going to be a, a need for either some replacements of the ACs there's one, one unit downstairs was well. Uh, that's that's going to be a, uh, uh, two units are probably going to go out within the next, I don't know, two to three years. Uh, well, you know, we've had the guys here and uh, we seemed, we thought that we had it solved, but uh, evidently not. Uh, we're going to consider the, we got a, uh, in the men's bathroom here, we need a re uh, some renovation work on new flooring over in the men's bathroom. That's uh, on the list. We're considering a, a security camera down at the bottom of the basement area to uh, view um, <coughs> potential folks who abuse uh, the, the use of our trash can down there of our uh, major uh, Dumpster, right? Is that for a bear? For the bear. We're looking for the bear. <laughs> We're also going to review some landscaping needs at the bottom of the cemetery. That's going to perhaps uh, block some of the, uh, the visual of the uh, car path. Um, bell tower. This. I think. I think the main thing is going to be that we're going to have to look for in the future is going to be a re-roof of here and a re-roof of the church. So those are the two big things I think that have come to, to light that we need to prepare for. But other than that, we've, um, we've, we're working hard, we're making some improvements. We hope to get things, things uh, that we've earmarked for this year completed and then we have a two, two, two to three year plan for the others. But anyway, it's been fun and I enjoy working with, uh, with the team here. Any questions for Peter? Observations? Yes, Kathy. Well, one of Roman, from Roman Bruce's neighbors invited the church, please. <laughs> invite them, yeah, right, that's right. Invite the roofer to church. Very good. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, 
Um, I've already mentioned a mission and vision as we as we wind up here. Um, getting involved and engaged, you know, there are many ways to do that, uh, including the backpacks that uh, we're doing to get sort of back to school things that are coming up. Um, but, and we definitely want to hear also from our barn, Czar, Skip, and Sharon, who is the, the chair of that community, if you two would come forward and share some of the hopes and needs that you all have for that wonderful ministry. Everybody, how about it? The, the church didn't burn down while Ellen was gone for four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to mention a conversation I had with um, Rob and my brother Will about three years ago, sitting at a table right back here in the back when um, I, was talk, I was talking about the barn and how it was growing. And Rob said, Well, what do you think the potential is annually for the barn? And I said, $400,000. And then I laughed because I had no idea how to do that. <laughs> and I <our> skip running. <laughs> I At any rate, um, I just want to say that this is absolutely the most blessed ministry that I have ever been able to be a part of. It's amazing. I mean, it, you know, when you hear all of the things tonight that are being done in this church, I mean, you cannot walk around on our grounds anywhere without hitting your head on the Holy Spirit. Isn't it true? <laughs> I mean, it really is true. So um, the uh, generosity of our donors has been amazing. The shoppers have brought us alive, and the volunteers are incredible. So I just thank all of you for what you're doing with that. And skip. Good job, my friend. Um, I want to thank the very hardworking, hard dedicated board, uh, without whom none of this would happen. Uh, certainly all the great donations that come in. Uh, last year at this time, we were doing about anywhere from three to $5,000 a weekend. This year, we're Averaging 10,000 this past weekend, we did almost 16,000, which is almost our record. We are truly blessed. Um, I think for the year we have fiscal year starting the first of November, we have been 180,000. So, as I said, we are blessed to give it all back to the community. Thank you. <laughs> and if you or other people want to, to get involved, uh, as we said, there's a lot of great ways to get involved, and that's one of them. Yes, we can. Yeah. We talk, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I talk about work and work on communities, uh, on, on, uh, on different charities and operations. Laura Langford, Sharon Stricker, Skip Ryan, work. And it's not glamorous. <laughs> it is not glamorous, but their energy for this project has, Sharon always says, we count it all joy, but it has been an amazing project. And it really is due to the tireless energy of these two people. And I really want to And we count it all joy. Sharon's walking away. I was going to make a joke about that because in the middle of that word is no, oh, because a lot of it's like, oh, so what's happening now with the floods, whatever else, and a lot of those hurdles that the barn board is and everybody has done great work. So thank you for that. So at this point, um, before we conclude, just want to see if there are any hopes, questions, thoughts, concerns from the, the congregation. Joe, I'm going to pass this to you. Have you the vestry given any thought to a security guard here at the church with all this going on? Yeah. We have, and that's Allison. Is it? Yeah. Actually, Skip is an usher. He doubles as a security guard. <laughs> and the guard and uh, we're meeting on Thursday this week, 
And given what happens um, in Alabama, in Birmingham, um, I think it's certainly worth reflecting on what, what we can do and would be helpful for that to do. Um, it's just hard to figure out. And it's, it's sad, uh, it's, it's angering, it's, well, it's lamentful, if that's even the word, uh, that we have to take the, or think about those kind of precautions. Uh, but your safety is very important. Everyone's safety is important, and we need to uh, and want to take that seriously. So that is on our agenda for Thursday. My wife and I, when we first got in church Sunday, uh, I didn't know what she was thinking about. She didn't know what I was thinking about, but we were both thinking about what we would do at the shooter walk in the church. Right. She had decided she was going to lay down on the floor, and I decided I was going to lay down on top of her. <laughs> Right, and it is unfortunate that those are the things we have to think about and that our kids are thinking about in school. And I remember practicing tornado drills and, and bomb drills, but not active shooter drills. And so it's, um, but it is, I think we, we do, when we're in church, we need to think whether it's a, a fire or an active shooter, we need to know where the exits are. We need to sort of think in our mind, as Tom said, I'm going after the guy, just like someone did in Alabama. He picked up a metal, one of those metal church chairs, ran towards the guy, bopped him on the head, took away his gun. And, and that was his, whether it was premeditated, that he knew what he was going to do, or something else kicked in for him. Um, it's, it's just hard to say. And I it's hard to say. My wife. Yeah. Right. And it's hard to say even, you know, there were lots of security guards at the school in Yvonne, Rob Elementary. And all the precautions, all the training that they did, um, unfortunately, didn't look like it panned out the way they, they hoped it would, and the same for so many other places. Um, so uh, there are a lot of things to, to think about as we go. No, we just can't that. take for granted that it would never happen here. But that's right. Best area Hill is one of the safest places around Birmingham. Right. Seemingly. Right. Seemingly. Same for here. Seemingly. And whether it's an event like this or we had a movie night last week, just like they had a potluck supper, it's a church service. I think the needle can go too far to precaution, and I think it can go not far enough. And so I think it's where we can find the, the right way to, to do that. So there are a lot of vestry I see nodding their heads and others saying, okay, yeah, let's let's talk about it and come up with the with the plan. Even this as to how do we handle this plan and a reminder where the exits are and how to be safe. Thank you. Any other thoughts on that subject from, from you all? Oh, we need a, a folding metal chair. A folding metal <laughs> chair. The ushers will hand out a folding metal chair to each person. Um, yes, Russ. Um, wow. After the incident on Sunday at the 930 Mass, I wonder if, we, if there's a way we can arrange, just like we do have ushers and Eucharistic ministers, for services to have medical personnel try to attend uh, our regular cases. I don't know if we can coordinate that, uh, but it was scary. Thank you. It was. And um, that person is is okay. Chip is okay. Clay, Clay is okay. Um, but yeah, having a, a again, just we talked, we just had a training a couple of weeks ago. We talked about those things, what we, what we do, but just for everybody to be in the loop each and every Sunday about how that is. and even if it's having, we talked about this at our staff meeting this week, is having a list of who those medical people are. So the usher gets there, looks at that list, and as people are walking through, they're making a mental note, okay, we've got one, we've got two, we've got three. Uh, and, and usually there's somebody with, with nursing or medical experience some way or another in, in the room. Um, and, that's, and that's one way to handle it too. But yeah, that's, that's under consideration. But thank you for that, yeah. Right, we need to invite them to church too, <laughs> Kathy. Come on, say that. Yes, Ginger. I just want to say that we've been here six years, and normally a priest gets to take sabbatical after five years. <laughs> but he was fortunate enough in his six years' time to have the pandemic come. <laughs> he did not make himself take a sabbatical with me or having such. Problems. And he worked extra hard at home, at the church, trying to figure out how he could 
keep us all together, worship, loving each other, having a different ways to have church to be church. But, uh, I think the Holy Spirit worked on you real good. <laughs> <laughs> This month uh, marks my 26th year of ordained ministry and my six and a half or so years here. It is a pleasure and a, and a joy uh, to be here as your priest and as your friend and to, to walk with Christ together. And I'm very thankful for that. Again, it's it's a it's so much of a we kind of a parish. And I I'm greatly appreciate for all the love and support and leadership that you've shown. And uh, with that said, we've got uh, students about learning to get ready to learn some English. So if there are no further things, there is a little bit more uh, nibbles you're welcome to at the back. Right. We're we're go. Um, and also some wine that we can't just pour down the drain, but maybe I should promote that anyway. Um, <laughs> but thank you all very much for making the time to be here. Allison's going to close us with a prayer. We're going to pray prayer. Why don't we all, why don't we all stand? I don't know what's happening. This is right out of the prayer book. I could have just said your response is, we thank you, Lord. I probably didn't need to copy that. Right. <laughs> well, let's give thanks to God, our Father, for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. I think you can do better than that. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We, we thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you for bringing that up.